Hey everybody, God bless you. Good to be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Isn't that right? I hope you had a great day in the Lord today. Well, we're this is healing school tonight. This is the last Wednesday of the month, September. And so we're going to be talking about the topic of healing, divine healing. When I talk about healing, I'm talking about divine healing, which means supernaturally, which means God's power did it, which means God's Holy Spirit did it. Amen. And belief in God. That's what divine healing is. All right. So before we get into the word uh, that I want to share with you, I've got a couple announcements. This coming Saturday, we will be meeting together at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. for intercessory prayer, for corporate prayer, where, you know, uh, people come together, where we come together and pray together. Uh, so that's this coming Saturday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Also, October 9th. I'm excited about October 9th. It is a celebration. It's a, a pastor appreciation day for me, so I'm super excited. But that it's October 9th. I'm inviting everybody. Uh, welcome to our visitors, by the way, and welcome to our subscribers. You are invited to October 9th at 10 a.m., at Living Faith Christian Center, 2323 Route 73 in Pensacola, New Jersey. Come out and celebrate with us as uh, the congregation and those in attendance celebrate me as their pastor. And so I'm so excited. We, we, have, um, we have a couple of guests coming that Sunday. Uh, pastor Tim Story is coming. He's coming all the way from California. He's a blessed man of God, anointed man of God. He's an evangelist. He's, um, he's a mentor um, in the California area. Um, uh, he's a pastor uh, of a church there in L.A. And so, or in the outskirts of L.A., I'm not sure which one. But uh, he's an exciting uh, man of God. So we're excited that he's coming. Also, we're having a special a psalmist or a special musical artist, and his name is Ian Holmes, and he's coming from Pennsylvania to bless us with his gift on October 9th. So I'm really excited. I also just found out that our our uh, music director, uh, Andrew Walls, he's going to be there too. He was going to uh, go away and celebrate his birthday, but he just texted me and told me, he said, hey, pastor, I'll be there October 9th. I was like, yeah. You know, so so Andrew will be there as well. So I'm excited about that. I'm actually believing God. I'm I'm believing God that uh, that on October 9th with um, Pastor Tim Story and Iron Holmes and you know the whole Living Faith Christian Center family. I'm believing God that we are going to begin to operate under an open heaven. That the glory of God is, uh, that's going to be an opening for the glory of God to uh, uh, manifest and, and show up in our church, which I've been believing God for a very long time. And so I'm excited about that as well. So, um, but again, welcome everybody and Living Faith family. Mwah, I love you um, in Jesus name. Uh, if you, if you get, if you're blessed by this video tonight, please, uh, uh, give me a thumbs up. You can subscribe if you like as well. All right. So today we're talking about, I'm going to, we're always talking about healing. We can use as much information, as much of the word of God, as much teaching and preaching on healing as possible. Uh, because so many people are sick. Uh, a, a big population of the church is, is uh dealing with sickness and disease. The world is dealing with sickness and the disease. And um, in, in a day and age where uh, medicine is just, you know, is just so awesome and, um, you know, the type of surgeries that they can do, they can replace people's hearts, uh, in, you know, implant um, organs and do laser eye surgery and, you know, all those fantastic things. But people are still sick. They're still sick. 
And some things, they can't be fixed by laser. They can't be fixed by surgery. And uh, those things especially is why we want to tap into God's divine healing that he already provided for us. And so uh, tonight I'm going to talk about why am I not healed? Why am I not healed yet? And so I'm just going to share some things. Now, perhaps, you know, if you go to Living Faith, you know, we believe in healing. We, we teach healing. Uh, we preach about uh, divine healing. We believe in healing. And so there, there are scriptures that we, we stand on as a congregation and as individuals. We know Psalm 103, verses 1 through 3. And it reminds us, it says, to not forget God's benefits. Amen. How many of you know God is full of benefits? How many of you know that God is a loving God? How many of you know that God is a perfect God? How many of you know that God had a perfect salvation plan? And that salvation plan, it didn't just uh, deliver us from our sins. That salvation plan, that perfect salvation plan that um, the Father did through Jesus Christ, um, you know, uh, um, it, it was a perfect plan and, and God didn't leave out anything. And so we have to constantly remind ourselves since sickness is so rampant, we have to remind ourselves and remember that healing is a part of our salvation. Healing is included in the definition of, uh, salvation in the definition of saved and I'll read that definition to you. The word saved in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. That word saved, it's the Greek word sozo. And so I'm going to actually read straight from, from that. And let's see, let me go back. Um, save, let's see. I'm going to pull that up. Okay. And give you that definition. Okay, actually, I, I have it right here. I did decide to write it down. So, um, the word saved, or as we uh, refer also to salvation, back to Psalm 103, uh, says, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our iniquities, and who has healed all of our diseases. God has forgiven us of all our iniquities. When we get born again, everything, every sin goes under the blood. Isn't that right? At the same time, that same salvation plan, that still part of that benefit plan was healing, divine healing for, for our whole bodies, including our minds. Amen. And we got, you know, um, so the word saved, uh, Romans chapter 10, uh, it says that in, uh, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That word saved, it means to save. It means to keep safe and sound, Right. Sound means whole. It means to rescue from danger or destruction. Okay. Sickness and disease is coming. It comes at us. It comes to destroy us. Okay. Um, so to that word saved, it means to rescue from danger or destruction. It means to save a suffering one from perishing. Remember the scripture says that he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction, sickness and disease. The devil is he, if he could, if he could, and if he can, he would kill everybody, right? Because he hates man. He hates God. He knows he's not going to win, but he can try to cause as much damage as possible. And that means to attack mankind. Amen. It means to, it means to, um, to make well, it means to heal, it means to restore. So the God salvation plan to be saved means to be healed. It doesn't just mean we escape hell and get to go to heaven when we leave this earth. It means that we, those that call in the name of the Lord, they will be made well. They will be, they will be healed. They will be restored to health and they will be delivered or protected. And so even, even protection, divine protection is part of God's salvation plan. That's why we have to watch our words. We can't speak words of fear and doom and gloom and danger and panic and all those things because God 
salvation plan has been put into place even to deliver and to protect us. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? Amen. Uh, so we know Psalm 103 says that he forgives us of all of our iniquities. He heals us of all of our diseases. Proverbs chapter 4. I'm actually going to read Proverbs chapter 4. Uh, start in chapter 20. I'm sorry. Proverbs chapter 4. I already said that. Proverbs chapter 4 and starting in verse 20. And it says, my son, give attention to my words, okay? Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of, or uh, in the midst of your heart. That means keep it fresh. It has to stay there. It has to be the focus. God's word needs to be the focus and the center of, of our lives. And keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them. And health, that word health, it means healing, it means deliverance, it means restoration, it means to be cured, it means medicine. Because God's word, it's medicine to all of our bodies. Let's put it, make it simple. It says, and medicine to all our flesh, but it means medicine to all our whole bodies, whatever's in this body, uh, the word of God uh, brings healing to it. It doesn't matter. I, I love the fact that the, with divine healing, it goes straight to the problem. You know, divine healing, you don't have to rub this on and, and uh, take this medicine and take this thing. Of course, we take the word of God, which says here that it's medicine to our flesh but uh, the, the word of God, it just goes in. The word of God has power in it. It's the, the, uh, there's power embedded in the word of God. The word of God is power. Amen. And so we need to constantly remember that divine healing, healing that comes only from the power of God supernatural power, supernatural healing. We're not talking about getting healed by taking something, drinking something, swallowing something. We're talking about divine, meaning God does it. God does it, okay? Uh, but, you know, so we get challenged sometimes. So we know that um, 1 Peter 2.24, it says, I'm going to read that too, 1 Peter 2.24, um, if you... If you attend Living Faith, we actually have uh, scripture cards with healing verses on it. First Peter 2.24, I'm going to start at 23, talking about Jesus, who when he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. Look, Jesus didn't get back. He didn't retaliate. He went through the whole process. For, for the Father, first of all, um, and then f and finally for us. So uh, he did not threaten, but he committed himself to him who judges righteously, talking about God the Father. And verse 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, you and me, that we having, uh, that we having died to sins, isn't that right? who forgives us of all, it, all our iniquities, who heals us of all our diseases. We, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. It's, it's not something that's still out for discussion. It's not something that we're waiting to happen. By Jesus' stripes, because he bore our sins in his own body, at the same time, on the same cross, through the same salvation plan, by his stripes, went by his wounds. He was whipped. He was, he was slapped. He was punched. He bled. He was unrecognizable uh, that he was treated so horribly and, and grievously. And, but by those stripes, we were healed. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. The, the Amplified says, he personally bore our sins 
in his own body on the tree. Now, uh, most Christians, the majority of Christians, believe that, okay? Isn't that right? Because it's true. And so, but for some reason, it's easier to believe that, um, that he personally bore our sins in his own body on the tree as on an altar and offered himself on it that we might die, cease to exist, to sin, and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. If we have been healed, that means it's already ours. It's already allocated. It's, it's, it's already healing. Divine healing is, is already ours. That's, that's part of our possession. That's a part of uh, God's benefit plan. Amen? So that's great news. That's great news. So I want to share, what I want to do is share, since I, you know, if you tune into this, uh, tune into Healing School uh, every month, uh, the, the last Wednesday of every month, then you've been hearing me preach one way or another way, this way or that way, preaching about divine healing. Isn't that right? So what I want to share I just want to go through some things, and um, I decide I'm going to save the first one for last. But I just want to go through some things, some some reasons, uh, obstacles why we're still not healed yet. Now, a lot of people, um, we're believing God for um, for healing in our bodies, right? Now, we, we all should know that not all healing, not all healing for different reasons uh, is not instantaneous. But, and I'm talking about the manifestations of it. I'm talking about when we see it in our bodies, when, when, when it's evident in our bodies. Not all of it is instantaneous, as in like an instant miracle is what I'm saying. But that that doesn't mean that healing doesn't still belong to us. There's just some type of glitch. There's some type of delay in our thinking, delay in our beliefs. Uh, we can just know if, if God already did it, it's not his problem. As in, it's not an error on his, <laughs> no, on God's part, Right. We know Jesus. He's already in heaven, so he already did the cross. He already served our sentence for sin, right? He already was raised from the dead, so we know that's not the issue. And with and by his wounds, by his stripes, we were healed. So that is that's a done deal. That is a a, a biblical truth. It's a biblical fact. It, it's done. It's it's done. We don't have to worry about. If healing belongs to us, we don't have to worry about, you know, we shouldn't be concerned. It should, shouldn't be a question in our minds because of these various scriptures. It shouldn't be a doubt in our minds um, that healing is the will of God. Now, you need to stop judging yourself. You need to stop uh, um, deeming yourself as unworthy to be healed. Look, if there's even if you made yourself sick through how you abuse your body or whatever, repent, just, just repent. Just say, God, I did this to myself. I know I did. And then you just repent, which means turn around, change your, change your position, change your actions, right? Stop what doing, stop doing what got you here. Okay. And then just receive God's forgiveness and his cleansing and, and get healed received your healing so don't let don't let sin be an obstacle to receiving your healing okay so uh one of the things that i, I want to mention is that uh for not uh receiving your healing yet is you've not made your healing a priority you've not made your healing a priority okay in other words you know, you are all excited. Um, you are believing God, standing on the word. Say, Lord, I thank you that your word is health to all my flesh. And, 
um, by Jesus stripes, I'm healed. I received my healing in Jesus name. And, you know, you did all, all the right things. And then something happened. What, what sometimes time happens, T time happens, time goes by. And now, uh, now all of a sudden your healing is on a back burner or something. You're, you're being distracted. Um, I, I tell people when people, um, tell me uh, about a sickness that they're dealing with and that they're believing God and maybe I pray with them or um, lay hands on them or whatever the scenario. I tell them, look, right now, right now, your preoccupation, your, your, what you should be, um, what you should be uh, all in for, what you should be focusing right now, ma'am, sir, is your healing, okay? That means you're going to have to devote your time. You're going to have to make your healing a priority. You're going to have to make your healing a priority, okay? So, you know, you, everything else needs to, you know, take a sidestep. I'm not saying you don't take care of your family and things like that, but that means, you know, TV, hey, cut that out. Reading stuff, cut that out your hobbies, whatever, you need to cut that stuff out or down and then make healing your priority. So, uh, so sometimes you don't, you haven't received the healing yet because you're distracted. You're distracted. Joshua 1, 8, God told Joshua, he said to meditate on his word, to be of good courage, to meditate on my word day and night, Right. And don't, don't let it leave your eyes. Don't let it leave your heart. Don't let it leave your mouth. Don't let this word leave you, leave, leave you. Don't let it leave you. Like it needs to be, it needs to be in there. It needs to be constant. You need to be constantly aware of healing scriptures. You need to be constantly aware that Jesus took my si sicknesses and my diseases. And so, so we need to be focusing on the word of God. So we need to meditate on the word of God. The, to meditate on the word of God, I want to, uh, before I forget, I want to make sure I mention vision. Meditating on the word of God will cause you, you know, when we're believing God for healing, we need to envision being healed. We need to envision ourselves walking straight. We need to envision uh, uh, ourselves with, um, with, a clear eyesight. We need to envision ourselves when we're taking a test or taking our blood pressure or whatever it is, whatever the sign or symptom is, we need to envision ourselves as being healed. A, a good example is um, if, you're, if you're having trouble not having children, you need to envision yourself holding a baby, you know, having a nursery, picking out a name you need to envision yourself uh healed and and um fertile and having a having a baby you know so that's important you have to get all involved and so meditating on the word of god will do that it'll it'll paint a picture for you okay it'll cause you to see into the spirit realm and and see your healing you have to use your god-given imagination to see yourself healed. Okay. So, uh, don't get too busy. You know, you can't be too busy when you're sick. You can't get too busy. You can't be too busy doing other carnal natural things. You need to be focusing on the word of God and getting healed. Psalm 119 11, of course, it's, uh, it says that we are to hide the, uh, God's word in our hearts. David says, so I will not sin against you. So when it comes to meditating on the word of God, we need to be memorizing scripture. You know, I remember uh, um, someone said, I think it was Gloria Copeland, but she, um, I never forgot, but she said, the word of God that is in your heart, that you've stored in your heart is the word of God that speaks to you. So if it's not in there, it can't speak to you. It, it can't come up. And that's why Proverbs 4 says to keep the word of God in the midst of your heart so that it's always accessible. So when you need the word of God, no matter what the subject is, the topic is, 
The need is we want that word to come up out of our hearts so it can be there to minister to us that we can be victorious. Amen. And so that we can overcome. So you need to be memorizing scripture. You know, um, you don't just wait till the last Wednesday of every month to, to hear about healing. If you're believing God to receive your healing, it's not, it's not a sometime thing or now and then thing. No, you need to be preoccupied with being healed and focusing on that. Amen. Because that is what you need at this time. Mark chapter four, and verse 19, of course, it says it's talking about the sower sows the word, the, 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 um, and then the word goes into, uh, different kinds of hearts. Of course, we want a heart that has, that has good soil, but it says that when, when, when you receive the word, uh, some people, it falls onto different, different kinds of ground, stony ground, shallow ground. And, um, and it says in Mark four nineteen, it says, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things. Look, you shouldn't be having no lust for other things, period. But when you need healing, you should be going after that and not other things. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it's a sickness or disease that's trying to kill you. You need to focus on this. And so we don't want, it says that, and the cares of this world, you know, like I said, don't stop being too busy. You can't be too busy to sit down and read your word. You can't be too busy to sit and confess the word. You can't to be too busy to pray to God and, and just thank him that you're, that, uh, that he healed you, you know, that he provided healing for you. We just can't be too busy. So the cares of this world, and it says that these things, they choke the word. Another word for choke, it means all these other things. When, when you're believing God for healing, um, we don't want all those other things to suffocate and to choke the word so that it becomes un ineffective. And so perhaps you've been, you know, you've been believing God for uh, healing for something for quite some time, but you've been distracted and you've lost your focus and you haven't made your healing a priority. Okay. And that's what happens a lot of times we can you know, there's different things. Some things we can call minor that are uh, are wrong with our body. Some things are livable, can I say, or, you know, you can deal with them. But, um, but you know, especially when something's uh, so something that's not so deadly, we can kind of let it, uh, you know, I, I said my verses and, you know, I confessed my scriptures and uh, I, I rebuked it and told it to go away and, you know, all those things. And then we just go on about our business, right? And then we just, and, and it's a long time before we address the thing again or before we praise God or thank God for our healing for those things. And um, so we want the word of God. We don't want it to be choked out by other things. Like I said, if you're sick, your priority needs to be to get healed. Amen. All right. So, um, Perhaps you're being distracted by opposing medical reports, okay? You haven't made it a priority, and um, uh, you're being distracted by opposing medical reports. You've, you know, you started out believing God for healing. Maybe somebody laid hands on you and said, thank you, Jesus, I believe I received my healing. And But then you still let the these opposing medical reports uh distract you and so they keep coming into the picture you know you'll be confessing the word then all of a sudden shoo, the doctor's reports right in front of your 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 mind's eye and you start looking at that instead of looking at the word of God amen and remember in Proverbs 4 uh, the uh, the Lord says to attend to my word incline your ear to my sayings right why? Because there's a whole bunch of other distractions. Isaiah 53 verse 1 says, Lord, who will believe our report? All right? So we need to make sure that our uh, that opposing medical records or doctor's records 
aren't distracting us from receiving our healing. So what do we need to do? We need to get back on course. We need to get back our focus, get our eyes back on the word of God, get our eyes back on the promises of God, amen, that belong to us. Get our eyes back on our healing, on our healing. Uh, and um, uh, a number two thing uh, that we haven't, that perhaps we haven't received our healing yet is because uh, we're allowing the devil to keep us, again, preoccupied, is similar to the first one I just mentioned. The devil wants to keep us preoccupied or busy with the sickness or disease so that you lose your focus about what you're really called to do, okay? The devil will use the sickness. He will use it. He will use it, you know, He'll be on you. The devil, he doesn't play, right? He can always affect your mind. So that takes a response from us or a reaction or a confession from us to get him out of our, our heads, out of our business, amen. But he will use sickness to uh, harass us, okay, to harass us. And uh, if we let our guard down, we'll find ourselves now we're back to being preoccupied with, um, with the sickness and not focusing on what's important. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, um, so the devil, he doesn't want us. One of the reasons why he wants us to be sick is because then our focus changes, changes to us. Now I got to worry about my head. I got to worry about my heart. I have to worry about my blood pressure. I have to worry about my kidneys or, or whatever it is. Uh, and, and instead of, and the devil wants to keep us distracted because Mark chapter 16 says that one of the signs that will follow them that believe, come on y'all, you're a believer. One of the signs that will follow a believer is they would cast out devils. Okay. So w if we're all uh, consumed by, you know, being at the doctor's office and um, uh, taking up our time, taking up our money. Now we're distracted big time, right? And all of our energies are, are being used up, focusing on our sickness. And he doesn't want us to be healed, right? Or to meditate, take the time to meditate on healing and the word of God, because he doesn't want us to turn around and then and, and jump on his case and take care of him, and cast him out, and lay hands on the sick, or on people who he's made sick, so that they can recover, okay, so we've got the power to bind and loose, God's given us keys to the kingdom, he wants to distract us, and take our attention off of all that, okay, but I'm telling you, and I know you know already, that you've been called, that you've been chosen, and appointed, and God has given us as believers the commission to, to, um, to assist, to be God's hands, to be God's mouthpiece, to be God's representative, to see other people get healed. But if we're constantly distracted, if he can keep us distracted and focused on us and uh, our sickness and our ailments, then we're not going to help people, Right? So that could be one of the reasons why uh, you haven't received your healing yet. So again, we need to get back on course. We need to get back on the job as far as our healing is concerned. Um, again, Luke 10, 19, I'm going to read that. But it says, behold, I give you power. I give you the authority. Jesus said, I give you the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means shall hurt you, okay? So that's where our focus should be. We should be walking around, getting it, kicking the devil out of people, and kicking the devil out of people's business and out of people's bodies, amen? Uh, Mark chapter 16 and verse 17, of course, let me, let me read that for you. Mark chapter 16 and verse 17, that's a uh, scripture where Jesus commissioned us. I'm going to read that, and it says, um, and verse 16, it says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe, remember still, he who believes and is baptized. So wherever we see saved, 
healing is in there. So we can say he who believes and is baptized will be healed because it comes with salvation. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You are the healed. And the devil's trying to keep you sick. That's what he's trying to do. But we're the healed, and we're to aid and assist and cause people to be healed. So, But he doesn't want us to do that, okay? So, again, we need to get back on track. Get back on track. What's our assignment? Our assignment is to, is Jesus' assignment, to undo, to loose, to annihilate, to obliterate all the works of the devil who went around uh, making people sick, right? But Jesus, he went around healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Amen? And that's what we're called to do. Um, a, another reason, perhaps, that we haven't uh, received our healing yet is because we have not been seeking wisdom. We've not been seeking wisdom. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm uh, in a couple of ways. Um, for example, um, now we're going to read James chapter 1, but just some, some common sense things, okay? Uh, I'm not telling anybody you don't have common sense, but not seeking God for wisdom or exercising wisdom can be a reason why we haven't received our healing yet. For example, if you've been diagnosed with diabetes and you're still eating sugar, and you're still eating bread and pasta and crackers and cereal. And you've been diagnosed with diabetes. Now I know you believe in God for your healing. But that's not wisdom. That's not wisdom. You're just perpetuating. You know, don't do those things while you're believing God for your healing. Do those things after you're healed. But that's not exercising wisdom. Look, if you're a diabetic, you shouldn't be eating sugar. No, nobody, none of us, quite frankly, none of us should be eating sugar. But if you're a diabetic, if you've been diagnosed with diabetes, you should not be putting sugar in your mouth. That's not wisdom. Why would you do that? Your body is already messed up the, the 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 way that your insulin uh uh it's called insulin resistance i believe diabetes is insulin resistance because your body just is overworked your pancreas is overworked i think it's the pancreas right and pancreas is not anything to right pancreas isn't anything to play with okay so that's not exercising wisdom it's not exercising wisdom so we should be doing what we know to do uh, that will not um, not um, cause the problem to be worse or continue doing what caused the problem in the first place, okay? So you're believing God for your liver, right? They've told you you're on the verge of um, what, what happens to the liver, um, when you drink, whatever happened, that disease, I don't know why it slips my mind right now. Um, but you're believing God that your liver is going to be healed, but you're still drinking alcohol. That's not wisdom. You can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. You have to exercise wisdom and you have to, you have to love yourself. You have to protect yourself. You can't be foolish. That's, that's called foolishness. That's not called faith. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm not trying to fuss with anybody. I'm just just trying to be practical. And, you know, you just, you know, I think lots of times we, I don't know, you know, we go through things in life and we think we deserve to eat sugar or we think we deserve to go out and have a big bowl of pasta. Or we think we deserve uh, to have a glass of wine. That's not me. But, you know, thinking those type of thoughts. And so, but 
you deserve to be healed. You don't, you don't deserve to die. You don't deserve to have uh, things cut off of your body. Look, we have to exercise wisdom. And then, um, let me see. I'm going to read... Um, I'm going to read James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Oh, I'm sorry. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And it says, it says in verse 5, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed, by the wind for let not that man suppose that he will receive or woman that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double minded man, unstable in all his ways. So, you know, lots of times, you know, most of times we need to be asking God for his wisdom. Like, uh, what, what do I need to be doing? I'm, I'm believing you to be healed of this and this thing and that thing. But but I need some wisdom, God. I need some wisdom because I haven't, I haven't seen the complete manifestation of my healing. And I like to use the example, um, I, I'm, I apologize to her because I can't remember her name right now, but Dr. Nasser Siddiqui, uh, a, a, a preacher that I know, his wife, after she had one of her children, all of a sudden she got MS. She got multiple sclerosis and she found herself, you know, tripping and had to lean herself against the wall. She couldn't hardly hold her newborn baby. And, uh, you know, she was listening to scriptures, laying in the bed, had scripture playing, scripture after scripture after scripture playing. And um, as she lay there and she was seeking God and, you know, she was doing her due diligence. She was trying, she was seeking the Lord as, Lord, what is what has happened to me? How can I get healed of this thing? And then all of a sudden, uh, as she lay in her bed, the Holy Spirit spoke to her three things. Protein, uh, uh, carrots, and orange juice. Protein, carrots, and orange juice. Now we know, most of us know that orange juice has vitamin C in it. We know protein is protein. And protein is good for muscles, for rebuilding muscles. And then uh, carrots has vitamin A or beta carotene, I think is what it's called. Come to find out. Now, the Holy Spirit spoke those three things to her. She didn't know that those things, well, she didn't know about those things, the benefits of them, uh, really. Come to find out that those three things, because multiple sclerosis affects the myelin sheath, it's called the myelin sheath. I, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know exactly these things. But when you have MS, it has to do with uh, your myelin sheath uh, being destroyed and broken down. And I think it's something that's around the muscles. So come to find out, the Holy Spirit was telling her, you need to eat those three things. And so, and needless to say, she got healed of multiple, multiple sclerosis because the Holy Spirit gave her wisdom uh, regarding the disease that had attacked her body. I'm telling you, God doesn't want any of us sick. He doesn't want, he doesn't want anybody to die. You know, he wants us to be healed. He wants us to be whole. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to be full of joy. He wants us to be blessed, happy, fortunate, empowered to prosper, and to be envied. That is God's will for us. Sickness is not his will. It's never his will. It's never his way. Never. Jesus already took care of it. By his stripes, we were healed. He's not going to change. He, God hasn't changed his mind. He's not going to take away healing. Healing is for us. And not only is it for the believer, but God through us has made healing, divine healing that comes from God's power. He has called us to make divine healing available to even strangers, people that we don't know, people that we see in the store, people that we meet as we go about our day, people at work. 
he's even called us and extended his healing power to other people who are outside of the covenant of God or outside of the family of God currently. Amen. So, uh, so, so we need to have wisdom. I want to say one more thing about this, not too much, but sometimes, sometimes we need to pray. Sometimes some people uh, can be, um, how many of you know that God knows when your faith is able to catch up? Something is trying to destroy you. Something is trying to uh, kill you. Uh, something is uh, is uh, trying to make something worse, a condition worse. And sometimes, and God knows that um, according to our faith, according to our faith, not his word, but our faith, we are under time constraints. Let's say you need uh, something fixed. Nowadays, a lot of people are getting hip surgery, knee surgery, bone surgery, so, you know, you need to pray and ask God and get the fear out of the way. Look, God will use your faith for surgery as well. So sometimes we're putting things off. Sometimes it's things that we know we need to, we need a professional to take care of this for us. Okay. And then, um, it, you know, let's say one thing needs to get fixed because it's affecting everything else is making other things bad. So what I'm saying is, um, you know, if we were to get surgery, if we had to get surgery for a certain thing, then we're going to have to put our faith in God covering the surgery. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and getting the fear out of the way. So, uh, because God knows that we won't catch up and he wants us to live. He's not going to penalize us because we had surgery. He's not going to penalize us because we go to a doctor and temporarily get a medication. But um, he just wants us to live. Amen. And doctors are uh, amazing. They can be amazing. And so sometimes you, uh, you know, you need to pray to God and God will give you the okay. He'll give you the go ahead and say, okay you can get this surgery. I will be with you. I'll cover you. And the surgery will be successful. And so we, so then we put our, our faith in that, but the, 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 um, the result is that we get healed. Okay. So, and I, I just said that because we just don't want to keep suffering and suffering and suffering and, and, and pain really distracts people. It really does. And, um, I'm not saying we don't ever have to put up with pain. We do. We do sometimes when we believe in God for our healing, but sometimes uh, something more needs to be done. And then we just have to switch over our faith, uh, into, uh, God using a doctor, a surgeon to help us, um, get healed. Amen. And to repair our bodies. So I wanted to say that. And then, um, <laughs> and then, um, that's so I wanted to share those things with you. Now, I, I want to encourage you to keep believing God, stay in the word of God, find your healing scriptures. They're all over the place. They're in your Bible. It, probably if you Googled uh, healing scriptures, you could just pull them all up and just get into the word of God and, and, t and put your focus back on getting healed. That needs to be your job right now. That needs to be what you're doing. Uh, okay. That needs to be a vital and important part of your life. That means to your healing needs to be added to Matthew chapter six. That says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You need to look into the word of God and look into the kingdom of God so that you can get your healing. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, be encouraged, be encouraged. Um, so let me pray. Father, I just, I just pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your divine healing. You have provided healing for all of your people and not just your people, not just your family, but, but humankind. And so father, we thank you. We, 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 we get back on course tonight. We get back on course. We can continue to believe you uh, for uh, different healings, 
God, we will exercise wisdom and we will exercise self-control and we will not make a problem worse. Um, uh, we will exercise wisdom. We will be faithful. Uh, we will follow your instructions. We will trust in your word. We will trust in your healing power. And God, we just, we just thank you. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that those under the sound of my voice who listen to this video or are watching, Father, I pray that they would uh, believe you that as they've heard tonight, as they've heard uh, scriptures and sermons in the past, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Father, I pray that they would, uh, they, that they would, uh, that faith would be produced in their lives to believe you for healing. Father, I touch and agree that everyone who is experiencing sickness and disease right now, I speak the word of God. I send the word of God to you, to your bodies. I pray that you receive the healing power of God across this video right now in the name of Jesus. The spirit realm has no time or space. And so, Father, we thank you. There's there's no interruption um, b between me and them. And, Father, I speak healing to their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke sickness and disease in Jesus' name. Father, we touch and agree together that they will re receive their healing and that they'll stand in faith and they'll determine that I'm getting my healing in Jesus name and that healing belongs to me. Somebody say healing belongs to me in Jesus name. Well, uh, God bless you. Uh, remember, uh, this coming Saturday is intercessory prayer or corporate prayer from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. for all of our living faith family or anybody who wants to come by and join us in prayer on Saturday and October 9th. Please, everybody share Share this announcement about October 9th. I want as many people in the house as possible. So share our Facebook page. It's October 9th and Pastor Tim's story and I and Holmes. Uh, they're on our Facebook. So share. Click that thing all around. Tell everybody. Send it to everybody that you know. Tell it to everybody that you know. It's going to be a blessed day. And it's going to be, we've entitled it Simply Supernatural. Amen. Sometimes we try to make things too spooky, too hard, too complicated, but uh, God wants us to be simply supernatural as a lifestyle. Amen. So come out and see uh, Tim's story, uh, a great man of God, powerful man of God, and hear Iron Holmes, and uh, just be part of, of that day and, and, come and um, uh, come and make me happy. Amen. Praise God. Well, I love you. God bless you. And I love you. See you later. Bye-bye.